Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 14, and today we're talking about the utility engine. So as we noticed before, we had engine one, we had engine two, and then we also had a third engine here called utility engine. So turning off engine one and focusing just on the utility engine, inside here, we're gonna have three oscillators, two of them being sample or noise oscillators. And the third one is gonna be a sub oscillator, very similar to the analog oscillator as we looked at before in the analog engine. So with this analog oscillator, we can turn this on here with this little power button. We have our, cho our choice of shapes for the different waveforms, as well as the width knob for the square wave and for the triangle wave. On the right hand side, we have the coarse tuning, which is default at minus 12. So one octave, so kind of more so intended for a sub oscillator. We have our note tracking. So with this off, it doesn't matter what note I press here. Let's turn this volume down just a little bit. But if we turn it back on, our keyboard changes the pitch. We have pitch quantization, which we did talk about before in the analog video, but you can edit this and choose your different notes that you want to play. So if you're modulating this course knob, it's only going to hit the notes that you enter here. Then we have our fine tuning up one semitone, down one semitone, pretty standard. We have the filter mix, filter one to the left and filter two to the right or any mix in between. So with these filters here, which we're going to talk about later, then we have the output for this oscillator. So right now it's going to the filters at zero dB. So no change or additional amplitude. We can select this down arrow here and we can change it to FX bus A. So it's gonna to go to the FX A bus, to the FX B bus, or direct out by passing the filters and the effects. So these FX A bus and B, we're gonna talk about later on in the effects section, which are gonna be these two tabs over here. So turning this oscillator off, we look at this noise oscillator one because two is basically the exact same thing. So we have this white noise here that we're gonna play. And that's gonna be the sample here that's loaded in here, the sample of white noise. And it's just looping over and over and over and over for however long we want to. And that's because this loop button is checked. So we can turn this off. And then now we have access to this length knob here, which we can turn this down and it changes the length of the sample that's located in here. Now, if we want to change this, there's a lot of options here in this digital section. That's where we'd find this white noise, but there's also a lot of other sounds. Turn this up here. There's a lot in here. I highly recommend you go through them. A very cool stuff here. We have some Atmos. And we also have some transient stuff. So if you're making percussive type of stuff, kick drums, snare drums, hats, what name you, you have a lot of these different transients to mix in. Whereas you can use engine one, engine two to sculpt the sound, and then utility engine three to add some transients to it and maybe use the other oscillators. Who knows how you design your stuff, but you have the options to do that here. And then back in the digital, we could have phasing value, resonant bright, Let's double click that, and it's gonna load that one in here. Now we have the rent, you have the phase. So basically if you want to re-trigger the phase, it can be here on random as it is on default, or it can go to key. So your key is going to re-trigger the phase every time you hit a note. Moving on, we have the quantization, not the quanti quantization, but like the note tracking. So if we turn this on, this sound is going to follow your keyboard's pitch. But maybe you don't want that, so you can turn that off. And no matter what key you press, it's going to stay the same sound, same pitch. Next up, we have the tuning up 36 semitones and then down 36 semitones. So quite a healthy range for this one as opposed to the one, the fine tuning down here. Now we have a filter. So in, in uh, noon position at the very top here, there's no filter happening. We can go to the left and go to low pass or right to high pass and kind of have a percentage in between these as well. And then here for the output, we can go to filter one, filter two, or we can have the volume for this individual noise, which is helpful because if we have a couple of these here, we can kind of mix these in. So we have this sub oscillator going to the filter and we can basically mix these three oscillators with their individual volume controls. So that's basically it with the utility engine. It's pretty basic, but it's extremely helpful. And I'm very happy that it's in the synth because I have come into a lot of issues where I'm burning up both of these engines and I really need an extra utility engine, just maybe a little transient stuff, background noise, another oscillator would be helpful. And it is in here. And then also the ability to route a oscillator here as a direct out, is, which is helpful if you have a low end sine wave and you don't want that going to filters or effects. It's very handy to select direct out. So it's just going out to the master as you see here. So yeah, that's a utility engine in a nutshell. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.